the reason I came here was uh, we are, I'm the chairman of Brack Bank, and Brack Bank is uh, a member of the Global Alliance for Banking on Values. Uh, I think we had two people from uh, our alliance who came and participated in the previous uh, forums. Uh, one was James Blum, who is the chair of our steering committee, and the other was uh, Tamara Bruman from Canada. Mm -hmm. She runs Van City. And they suggested that I should come here because it was uh, something different and uh, we'll get, uh, you'll get fresh insights into issues that we all are tackling or thinking about. And that's exactly what I found. And uh, that is my story, if that is a story at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, it's different from any other conference I have attended before. I have, uh, I speak at uh, uh, many conferences as a, either keynote or in a, as a panelist. But uh, what struck me here was the, the context and the content of the, of the s uh, different uh, programs you have. And uh, the film, for example, Nora Bateson's film, that was amazing. You know, I really, it really made me think, you know, sit back and think, what is it that we do not apply this thought process to? And that, I think, is a very important question because we deal with people and people's lives and people's problems and, prob and people's issues. And this gives a new insight in the in way we should be thinking or way, if we think this way, we probably will come to different conclusions or different solutions to issues that we are thinking about. So that was extremely useful. And the first day, the different speakers who, sp who spoke about different issues, th those were very illuminating for me. And uh, today, you know, I spoke on trust. And that was very fascinating because I, I, I was thinking last night, you know, what do I say about trust? And I said it in my speech, I'm not a philosopher or a psychologist. And uh, yet I've been asked to speak on trust. So I had to think, uh, you know, what is it for a normal human being what is it about trust for a normal human? How does it affect? Because a philosopher would think it in, in one way, a psychologist would think in another way. So that, in, in going through that exercise of thinking, that also gave me insights into many of the issues we are thinking about. Where is trust required? What level of trust required? Who is the person who should trust? And what is the type of trust that is required? Because as I said, you know, trust is hardwired into our systems. The human being has to trust to operate in a, in a society, in a community. But trust is a very relative thing. It has different stages. It has different kinds of connotations. So what is it that, it, uh, that trust is? And I, gave, I made up a definition you know, on the way. And I said that uh, trust is a repetitive um, outcome repetitive positive outcome of a casual relationship that allow you to make uh, intuitive choices. I don't know whether it makes sense. And then I put that lens and tried to look at the issues of today. And uh, one of the things that struck me is the neoliberalism that swept through the world over the last few years, last two decades, I believe, or three decades, that uh, it has it ha it's a new paradigm where they said that the trickle-down effect is going to cause less inequalities or create less inequalities among people. But the trickle-down was not really a trickle-down. It was a trickle-up. And it wasn't a stream. It was a river. And we have more inequalities now than we ever had before. Look at USA. You know That's exactly what they're complaining about. And then also, you know, I was talking, I was thinking about all these uh, fantastic innovations that have taken place that could make life easier, particularly in the, towards the concept of inclusivity. You know, we need an inclusive society and less uh, division so that uh, we don't have conflicts. And to do that, we need to include everybody in the society. We have e-health, we have e-learning, we have e-banking, uh, but have they reached the common people? The answer is no. So why isn't it happening? The technology is there. The capital is there. 
The world is awash with liquidity. Why isn't it going there? So in personal relationships also, you see the traditional institutions like marriage and things like that are being questioned. So th I think for a common person like me, I was thinking that probably that is where trust has been betrayed in a way. And that is why I need to get back that trust so that I need to, so that I can participate in the community and society more effectively. And that is what, as I say, real democracy is about, empowering people so that they can take the decisions themselves, make the choices themselves. And for that, we need positive outcomes, repetitive positive outcomes so that I can make those choices intuitively. And that's was what I said. And I, I, you know, I wouldn't have done gone through this process of thinking if I hadn't come here. So that's my story again. You know, it's I think it's been extremely useful. I'm happy I'm here.